It's just a few more hours to the NBA trade deadline, and we are psyched about what last-minute trades we'll be seeing. The Houston Rockets have also managed to finally pull a victory, with LeBron James out for four to five weeks. What does that mean for the Los Angeles Lakers? It was also a sad day for the entire NBA community as we mourned the loss of an NBA legend. Why was Justin Randle handed a fine worth thousands of dollars? How did the Houston Rockets manage to win a game? Well, let's find out. Welcome back to Courtside, where you'll get all the buzzing NBA news. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you already haven't, and also share this video with your pals. Just recently, the organization reduced the number of regulations vaccinated players had to follow. More flexible regulations were put in place for players who have taken the COVID-19 vaccine. However, this does not mean that the NBA has stopped taking precautions that were in line with the CDC guidance. On the 17th of March, a total of 485 players tested for the virus. Today, the NBA and MBPA announced that one of these tests had come back positive. According to the NBA, anyone who has a confirmed positive result or has been in contact with a confirmed case is required to stay in isolation until his health and test results say otherwise. As expected, the NBA has not made any formal announcement as to who has the virus, but we believe that they would have isolated the player as soon as they got the test results. Trey Mann is one of the best playmakers in college basketball at the moment. Since Jason Williams more than 20 years ago, no player but Trey Mann has been referred to as the best one-on-one -on -one playmaker on the court. And in a shocking reveal, Mann has stated that he wouldn't be going back to college. Rather, he would get an agent and turn pro. A 6'4 player, Trey Mann led the Gators with 16 points per game and 83 assists in a single season. He was also shooting 40.2% from the three-point range and the second leader rebounder in his college team. But he improved drastically in Florida's final seven games where he averaged 20.9 points. In four consecutive games, he hit more than 20 points in each game, placing him side-by-side -side with Nick Kalathis and Matt Walsh, who have had the longest streak by a Florida player in 25 years. In a statement he released on Wednesday, the young player said, I would like to thank Coach White and his staff at the University of Florida for believing in me and helping to shape me into the man and player I am today. Thank you to all my teammates who shared the Gator uniform with me for the last two seasons. He then added, thank you to my family for always providing me with love and support. No words can ever describe how grateful I am to you. Man isn't a complete stranger to the NBA. After his freshman season, he enjoyed a brief stint in the NBA, where he averaged 5.3 points off the bench. However, he ended up going back to Florida, where he became the best player on the team after the collapse of Keontae Johnson in December. What makes Man different is his ability to be really fast with the ball, while also being really difficult, or perhaps impossible to guard. His abilities immediately got noticed by scouts, and they saw a young player who was ready for the next level. His coach, Mike White, had also seen this. Coach said that every single player on every college team wants to play at the highest level, and as a coach, he has a duty to always tell them when they have a realistic shot at being in the NBA. He added that he would be first to open the door and tell them to leave. Perhaps Trey Mann's decision to leave is partly due to his coach's advice. Mann is no doubt going to be an early draft pick as he is currently ranked number 15 on ESPN's draft ranking. LaMelo Ball recently suffered an injury against the LA Clippers in the second quarter of the game. He had been fouled by another player, and in a bit to break his fall, he had landed with his hand. This resulted in a wrist injury that caused him to leave the game in the fourth quarter. On Tuesday, the player underwent a successful surgery on his wrist to address the fracture. The Charlotte Hornets announced that the surgery had taken place at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City by Dr. Michelle Carlson. This does not, however, mean that he would start playing as soon as possible. His team announced that his wrist will be immobilized for now and his condition will be reevaluated in four weeks. If after evaluation he is still not considered fit for playing, then the Hornets would have to go another few weeks without him. Ball is a necessary part of the Hornets team. He's the only rookie player in 60 years to lead all rookies in total points, rebounds, assists, and even steals at the All-Star break. Ball also won in January and February the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month award. Before his injury, Ball was averaging 15.9 points per game, 5.9 rebounds, 1.59 steals, and 6.1 assists. Since February, the player now averages 19.5 points, 5.8 rebounds, 1.7 steals, and 6.2 assists. We expect that he would do better as soon as his wrists completely heal. At last, the streak is over. The 20-game losing streak is finally over for the Houston Rockets. Since February 4th, the team has suffered loss after loss. However, they finally defeated the Toronto Raptors 117-99 with Jay Sean Tate scoring 22 points for the Rockets. It's been a tough one for the Rockets since James Harden left, and things became even more difficult when Christian Wood sprained his ankle against the Memphis Grizzlies on February 4th. Wood would go on to miss the next 17 games, all of which the Rockets would lose. When Wood finally came back against the Thunder, it appeared like the Houston Rockets were finally going to get that win, but they didn't. On Monday, the team finally completed the task by defeating the Toronto Raptors, who are now the NBA team with the longest losing streak. While losing 20 games in a row might sound like a big deal, it's not as rare as we think. 
In fact, there are 13 other NBA teams that have lost 20 games in a row at one point or another. The standing NBA record is 28 games without a win, and this record is held by the Philadelphia 76ers, who managed to maintain this losing consistency across two seasons. The Cleveland Cavaliers have also lost 26 games consecutively in a single season. On Tuesday, Julius Randle, the New York Knicks forward, was fined the sum of $15,000 for directing inappropriate words at an NBA official. His fine also included publicly criticizing the officiating process of the NBA. This incident occurred after the Knicks lost by an overtime one point to the Philadelphia 76ers on Sunday night. Only 5.3 seconds remained in overtime, and Randle was suddenly whistled for a foul against Tobias Harris, the forward on the 76ers. To win the game, Harris recorded two free throws, which handed the team their victory. But Randle was not going to take this defeat without expressing himself. Right after the game, the player said in the post-game media session, blown call by the officials after all the fouling and everything that was going on, for them to call that and decide the game is ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They got to do a better job. It's too many games like this. To make the player understand that he shouldn't speak of NBA officiation in a negative light, NBA Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations Kiki Van De Wee announced the fine. Just recently, Paul George was also fined 35 grand for making critical comments after his team lost to the Dallas Mavericks. After the game, he said, can't go too much further than that. It's a bunch of lies. They know what's going on. We're putting a lot of pressure at the rim. It's insane that we're not getting these calls, but it is what it is. It's nothing new to me. Hopefully, we'll send a bunch of clips in. League's got to take a look at this. As earlier mentioned, the NBA trade deadline is here, and we can't wait to see the last-minute surprises that will spring up. Kyle Lowry's name has been on everyone's lips for the last few days, and this is stopping us from seeing that another Toronto Raptors player might be leaving very soon. And this is Norman Powell. Michael Grange of Sportsnet has reported that the Toronto Raptors are desperately looking for offers for the 27-year-old player. Interestingly, there have been a number of offers for him. The reason for this is quite understandable. He'll soon become a free agent and also currently averaging 19.5 points per game. If the Raptors aren't prepared for the 15 mil every year that comes with owning Powell, then it's best that they capitalize on his value now. Now let's talk about Kyle Lowry, the most admired player in the NBA right now. With every passing hour, the likelihood that Lowry will be moved increases. Among his admirers are the most principal, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Miami Heat. Currently, the 76ers look like the more plausible destination. Joining the team will draw him closer to his hometown, and the 76ers have better prospects than Miami. But the Heat are pulling a smart one to scoop up Lowry, and this is including Tyler Hero in the trade. However, at the end of the day, the decision will still fall back to Lowry, who has shown in the past that he wants to move, but a team which would offer him an extension. ESPN has also just reported that Victor Oladipo might be traded by the Houston Rockets. Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN said the Houston Rockets are progressing on several fronts in talks to trade guard Victor Oladipo, and there's strong confidence they'll execute a deal ahead of Thursday's NBA trade deadline, sources told ESPN. The Rockets are increasingly comfortable with the offers on Oladipo in the marketplace, which include young players and first-round pick combinations that the franchise believes are suitable returns to make a deal, sources said. Let's see how the trade deadline turns out. Elgin Baylor was an 11-time NBA All-Star who played with the Lakers for 14 seasons. He became popular in the 60s for his high-scoring style, a style which would end up being a model for the modern player. He played a major role in making basketball into what it is today and played with Jerry West to form one of the most dangerous tandems to date. He could hang in the air indefinitely and invent shots while he did that, before Michael Jordan and Julius Irving became international superstars. Elgin Baylor had set the framework for this. He died due to natural causes on Monday at the age of 86, and present was his wife Elaine and daughter Crystal at the time of his death. May his soul rest in peace. His contributions to the game will be remembered forever. With that said, what are we expecting to see on the last day of the NBA trade? Let's take a chill pill for now, lay back and watch. We are courtside.